The National Electric Code and the NFPA describe grounding as earthing, which is the intentional connection of the electrical equipment to the earth or to the ground. This, this allows loose stray or electricity to dissipate and to be distributed outside of the building. There are several different types of grounding methods. We'll describe some of them, but the most common and the most basic type is a ground electrode or ground rod. This is a rod placed into the ground that is solid copper and at least eight foot deep into the soil. Some jurisdictions require it to be completely buried. Others require it to be outside of the ground to prove that it is present. An inspector needs to identify that grounding method. Other methods include using the water pipe or continuous metal pipe leaving the building, a ground ring, which could be a complete encircling of the building with a continuous uh, uh, conductor, or an oofer ground, or eufer ground, depending on your pronunciation, which, which could be attachment to the steel in the concrete, or the structural steel ground, which could be a bonding or a connection within the structural steel of the building. So if we've established grounding as earthing, bonding is the metal to metal connection between all of the electrical components in the building that ultimately distributes to the ground electrode or the ground electrode conductor present in the building. And so that connection in the metal conduits and the metal boxes establishes the bonding present in a building. An inspector is required to inspect the grounding and bonding of the building. And in looking at that, the, the grounding and bonding source could be on the inside or the outside of the building, depending on the type of bond or ground present. In this case, this is a lateral or underground service of which I'm inspecting suite 400 of this building. In inspecting the service disconnect of suite 400, I'm trying to identify the visible grounding source present. And in this case, I'm identifying that it goes up into, into this, this cabinet that's above and raceway, but I have a solid ground elect, uh, conductor here coming down. And as I trace that, I find that I have a ground electrode here servicing that conductor. This is a buried rod, the buried rod at which I cannot verify the depth is present here and of which they have a second conductor coming off of that, which goes behind me. And it shows that they have placed two ground electrodes next to each other to increase the grounding necessary for this building. It is not necessary for you to measure or calculate any ground methods. But in the visual inspection, I have a clamp. Your conductor always needs to be installed on the opposite side of the screw. So in this case, it's on this side of the clamp. And a deficiency would be a loose clamp, a missing screw, or the conductor being placed on the opposite side or the screw side of the that driven rod. Again, other grounds could include ground rings, water pipes, steel structure, or oofer grounds, and they too might be present in the same building, used as a secondary ground, uh, especially in the event that one of these may fail, and you will want to identify those. If I was inspecting the entire building and not just the service in suite 400, then I would look at this entire assembly and try to identify any of the ground locations. And again, 
those will be identified either through this ground rod or in locations where I see conduit disappearing into the concrete. And in those cases, I would photograph those and make a note on my report of potential area where the ground source is pre where the grounding source is present because I can't directly identify the ground conducting electrode visibly through that conduit.